Hi, I am Cami, creator of the blog and YouTube channel, Tidbits. Today I want to show you how I took some scrap fabrics and a bit of our pure flax linen bed sheets that had seen better days and I turned them into beautiful tea towels for our kitchen. Um, I hope to inspire you to look around your home for some linens that could use some new life and to give you some instructions to start creating. Now, worry not, this sewing project is very beginner friendly. If you have a sewing machine, you can do this. Before we dive into this project, I want to tell you a little bit about what sparked the idea and desired me to cut up our beloved <laughs> linen sheets into tea towels. Um, one day, a representative from the Singer, the sewing machine brand company, contacted me, and she began to tell me about their global initiative identified with the hashtag SoSustainable. I think it's a wonderful time to start thinking about how we can be more self-sustainable, and I happen to love a good upcycle project. Now, I am thrilled to be joining Singer in this initiative and beyond grateful to have them sponsor this post and video. I learned to sew um, on an old, trusted Singer sewing machine, being taught and inspired by my angel grandmother. It is truly an honor for me to work with a company whose products have made such an impact in my life. Now, I am sewing with the Singer Quantum Stylist 9960. It's a beautiful machine with more sewing capacity than I can even wrap my head around. It's gentle hum and smooth stitches is just music to my ears. Now, no matter what machine you ha might have at home or whatever sewing machine you can find to borrow, this tea towel project um, will just need a simple straight stitch and you can sew them up in no time. Okay, first let's talk about the fabric that you will need for these tea towels. Now, tea towels are characteristically lightweight and they don't shed very many fibers. They are quick drying and particularly great for resting over maybe rising dough or keeping baked goods nice and warm um, while still allowing some air circulation. I use them frequently in our kitchen when I just place them over our sourdough starters and sourdough creations. I was constantly running out before wash day, so I desperately needed more. Now you can look around your home or the fabric store for many cotton fabrics or cotton blends that will work really great for this project. However, my absolute favorite fabric in the world, especially for tea towels, is 100% flax linen. I love the nature of this natural fiber. It's nubby texture, it's um, relaxed, crinkled appearance. Um, I just love how it feels in my hands and that it just gets better and better with age. Now, I had some linen scraps for these two that were big enough to make a tea towel, but I also knew that this would be the perfect upcycle project for our old linen sheets. Now, if you spend some time on my blog, it won't take you long to know, to discover how obsessed I am with linen and linen sheets. Uh, these sky blue sheets were actually in really great condition, except for one spot where my sandpaper feet and <laughs> restless legs had rubbed them raw. Now, it happens to every pair of sheets that we get, but I love linen because they hold up way longer. Alas, the time came for us to replace our sheets and I just couldn't handle tossing in such beautiful fabric. Um, besides that one spot in the fabric, the rest of it was incredibly soft and just beautiful from the years of use. Now, if you too have some linen or old linen sheets on hand, pull it out. Otherwise, get creative and look around your home for some pretty fabric to cut into or you can swing by the fabric store. A yard is more than enough for a tea towel or two. Uh, I like the size of my tea towels to be 28 inches by 19 inches. So um, if you have that much fabric to work with, you should be good to go. Just remember, if you have a new fabric, be sure to wash and dry it before sewing um, so that it is already pre-shrunk. Pre so if you like a pretty standard size tea towel, you will want to cut your fabric rectangle at 
28 and a half by 19 and a half to account for the seam allowance. Now, because I was working with a fitted sheet, I opted to cut the elastic part of the fabric so that I could lay it down nice and flat and make it easier to um, cut my pieces in preparation for sewing the, the tea towel. The important thing is to get your fabric rectangle on grain, which you can easily do with woven fabrics by just cutting a little slit and ripping it. The tear will follow the grain and then you can just measure from that slit and then do a little snip and tear again and it will be a perfect rectangle. Now I wanna show you ways that you could finish off your tea towel. Now the first way is just to do a simple hem all around the tea towel. The second option is to leave one with a one end with a frayed edge. And I think this is particularly lovely uh, with linen fabric. Um, I do love that perfectly imperfect look in my home. If you opt for a frayed edge, you should start by pulling these threads on the sh on one short end um, before you begin any sewing. I like to just use a seam ripper and move each thread out and then just gently pull it all the way out until I've reached my desired fray length. Now to keep it from fraying too much, you will want to run a stitch all along the top of the fray. If you are not going to fray an end, you can easily just skip that step entirely. Okay, I've got my cut piece here and it's already frayed on the edge like I showed you. Now I like to create a fabric hanger for my tea towels so I can just hang them on hooks in my kitchen. You could easily use some twill tape or ribbon, but for this, I really prefer to, to create the hanger out of the same fabric as the towels. So to do this, you'll just cut or tear a small fabric strip that is just about one and a half to two inches wide, depending how thick you want your hanger to be. Now I'm gonna show you how to sew this so it is ready to be sewn into the towel before we even get to that. Okay, so with my strip, I am just going to fold in the ends till they meet in the middle, and then I'm gonna fold it in half again so that those raw edges are just hidden right inside the strip. Now you could take the time to take this to the iron and iron that all out. Um, I find that if I just finger press as I go, um, it's just a little bit easier. So I just get the first part started and begin sewing that and then I'll just continue to fold along as I go. And here I just finger press it smooth and stitch as close to the open edge as possible so I close those seams inside. Now I, you can make this um, as long as you want. I have two towels to sew here so I'm gonna do it extra long so that I have enough pieces for both. Okay, so that should be long enough. Now you'll want to take this over to the iron and just press it out so it looks nice and flat. Um, before the hanger, I'm just gonna fold it and kind of, I just kind of guess how long I want it. And then I'll just snip it as big as I want it. You can make an extra long hanger or just a short one that's just really entirely up to you. Okay, with all that prep work done, we are ready to actually hem around the edges of the towel to finish it off. Now, I prefer to hem down the long sides first, and then I will work on the short ends. One other thing to note before you begin stitching along the ends, um, your fabric may or may not have a right side or a wrong side. You'll want the hem to fold down to the wrong side. Now, linen, doesn't have a wrong side or a right side, so it really doesn't matter, but I just wanted to be sure and point that out to you. Now let's um, deal with the hanger first. So I like to put it in the middle of a long end so that when I hang it, it hangs like that. Sometimes you'll see tea towels with the hanger in the corner stitched inside the hems. You could do that so it hangs long. 
but I'm gonna show you how I do it in the middle. So I'm just gonna find the middle of this long end by folding it in half. And then I'm just going to stick a pin right in that half mark. And then I know once I start sewing that long end that that's about where the hanger should go. So to begin sewing, I'm simply going to fold over the end twice and closing that raw edge inside of the seam. Um, I do each fold at about a fourth of an inch. So it's taking off about a half of an inch from the end. And again, just like the hanger, I just kind of finger press it to get it started and then insert it in my machine. And I sew as close to that edge as I possibly can and as straight as I possibly can. You might notice that I didn't backstitch at the top and that's because this end is going to be folded inside that seam. So I really don't want too much stitching there to make it too bulky. But um, I will probably uh, backstitch at the end of this one to reinforce that seam. Okay, so I'm getting close to where the hanger is. I'm just gonna take out my pin and I fold my hanger so that these ends are flat next to each other. I insert it inside of my seam so that when I run over this hanger, it'll just be stitched right inside and securely held in place. And then I just continue to stitch all the way down until I've reached the end. And here I'm going to back stitch a little bit forward and I am done with that side of the hem. Okay, it looks really nice and now I'm just gonna flip it over and do the other side, making sure that um, I turn this hem the same direction as this one I was sewing so that they're faced the same way. both long edges are hemmed and looking good. I just have one more short end to do because the other one is left frayed. So I'm just gonna quickly hem that one. That's all the sewing. Now you have one last thing to do for a really nice looking tea towel. Now my grandma always taught me that sewing was 50% stitching and 50% pressing. It's really helpful if you press those seams. It um, helps it create a much more professional look. So just go and get your iron and press those seams down nice and flat. And that is your final step. And that is it, such a fun, easy and quick project that is just so gratifying and useful. I love the look of the tea towels I made with my linen scraps, but the ones I made with the sheets are just so incredibly soft. I wish you could feel them. Now you could also use these same instructions to make some linen napkins, placemats, tablecloths, and so much more. If you find yourself with a lot of fabric to repurpose, simple cut and hem will create so many fun things for your home. Um, I still have the top sheet left for these linen sheets and my girls are begging for some linen summer skirts so I just might have to 
oblige. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and I hope that it's inspired some creativity and sustainability in you. If you need some sewing equipment, I highly recommend Singer. They have sewing machines for all levels. Pulling out my machine and making this project reminded me how much I love to sew, especially for my home. Just learning some basic sewing skills can help you create so many unique decor items that you just can't find anywhere else. We are working hard to finish our new living room in our new home and I'm excited to start sewing some DIY pillow covers for the space once our furniture arrives. I hope you'll subscribe and then follow along. If you are new to my blog, I'd love to have you check out my many other sewing tutorials. I will leave a link for that below. Thank you so much for watching and happy sewing. I hope you'll come back for more inspiration for do-it-yourself living.